Where does courage come from? Well, before I answer that question, I want to make a point that maybe is obvious to most of you, but it was one of those points that when I first heard it, it was just mind boggling to me. It, it had a, a profound impact. It was something I heard my father say he was speaking somewhere and he was, I think he was talking about Abraham and Isaac and the sacrifice of Isaac. And he said, you know, one of the prerequisites for there to be courage is fear. He said, courage is not fearlessness, but rather courage is when you do the right thing, despite your fears. Oh, my stars. I mean, I just thought, wow, that is so helpful. That is so heavy. That is so true. And it motivated me to uh, aspire to have courage, but it doesn't actually answer the question of where does it come from? And I want to suggest that uh, where courage comes from is a uh, a deeper fear of failure. Think about it in the context of the violence of war. I've never been in the armed services. I can't imagine what it must be like to have people shooting at you and bombs dropping all around you. I just can't fathom what that must be like in real life. And then I think about uh, situations like uh, World War I, where so much of the warfare was trench warfare, and you had to go over the top and watching uh, your compatriots fall like flies and the bullets going by you so fast. And I just think, how could someone possibly do that? I know it's not because they're not afraid. I'd like to say it's because they're thinking about all the things that they're fighting for. But the truth of the matter is it's probably that it's a deeper horror for such people to be known to have failed than it is to be shot or going into that burning building as a first responder. Same kind of thing. I'm I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that's a craven thing at all. In fact, I would say in some ways it's a very good thing. That is... Uh, As a Christian, I want to be sure that uh, when I'm faced with a challenge that strikes fear in me, that I'm ready and eager and willing and able to say it's more important to me not to uh, disappoint or disregard the word of my Lord uh, than it is for me to do the right thing. Uh, So that's where we get close to this for the believer. For the believer, I would suggest in a way similar to that line from my father, that fear is necessary. Uh, There's another fear that's necessary for courage to take place, and that is the fear of the Lord. That's what we need to be motivated to not fail at. Uh, We need to be motivated by our zeal and our passion to please him and to to delight him. So that when we go up over that... uh, Uh, bunker and into the fray. Uh, We know that we are doing so honoring God, glorifying God, and again, rejoice to do so. Uh, Certainly it's not the same situation in the sense that there was no immediate grave danger, but I like to think of that great line from um, Eric Little, uh, the Scottish uh, Olympian slash missionary who said that when I run I feel God's pleasure. That's what I want to have happen when I'm called to courage. I want to feel God's pleasure. How many times does God tell us to be bold, to be strong, to not fear, to be of good courage? Friends, I I think we have a very simple place where we can start. We need to stop being afraid of the world. We need to stop being afraid of disappointing them. We need to stop being afraid of losing influence with them. And we need to start being afraid of disappointing God. Father, for all the reasons that fear creeps up on us, we should have the the mindset, the truth, uh, zeal to hold on to this, that the one that we need to fear is fear God. Jesus tells us that. Don't fear the one who can kill the body, but the one who can kill the body and soul by casting it into hell. That's real fear, and it is the real source of real courage. 
May God be pleased to grant us all more courage. <laughs>